This is how you can use AI to generate realistic background with 2025. In this video, I'm going to show you and explain the step-by-step -step process on how I generate my background using AI. Also, how I get my composition to look right to make my final image look realistic. I'm also going to show you how I use ChatGTP to enhance the background of my image to make it look even more realistic. And finally, I'm going to show you how I actually change the background of my image inside of Photoshop. And this video is going to be a very detailed tutorial because it's from a live class I taught at the Encourage Academy just yesterday. So pay close attention. And if you want to know my full process, watch this video to the end. This image, I got it from Feli Square on Instagram. So you can actually generate our own background like this if we want this background. And maybe this one as well or this one basically any background you like you can actually copy it and generate your own you can use it directly like this but i'm not advised to use it directly like this because they can sue you all right so let's say i want to use this background for my own image on this image what i'll do i'll first of all open this super list crown image on on photoshop first so i'll remove the subject so i'll just right click if you have any questions just let me know i'll come back so I right click and open with Photoshop. All right, so we don't want to use this background like this. So just first of all, we'll remove the subject. So with the latest version of Photoshop, it's easier to remove tools, to remove anything inside of Photoshop with AI as well. Let's say you have the page version of Photoshop, right? Yes, sir. Okay, so it will be easy for you. So to remove any object or any person inside of Photoshop, it's easier now. Select this um, brush tool, selection brush tool, and just select the subjects or anything you want to remove inside of Photoshop and just generate if you're not working. So once you select what you want to remove, just click on this generative fee, then just type remove and it will automatically remove it with AI. It's going to be as if there's nothing there at all. So that's one advantage of using AI. If you have a page version of Photoshop, it's easier. Instead of using blue stamp tool or spot brush to do it or content aware, because it that way can work, but this one is it's going to give more precise. So let's wait for it a little. But you need strong internet connection. So the faster the internet, the faster it is. All right, you can see we've removed this subject now. So we have three options. The first option, the second option, and the third option. So whichever works. I think the second one works better. So what we are going to do, we are going to save this image and generate similar instead of just using this background. So I'm just going to save it on my PC. Then I'll come to this website, firefly.adobe.com. So if you have the latest, um, if you have the paint version of Photoshop, you automatically have access to this website. So this is the name of the website. For me, all you have to do for me, don't do anything, just click on generate. And these are the settings. Since we want to upload that image as a reference, we'll change it from landscape to portrait. Then we select pictures. You can use ads, but since we're working with pictures, we're going to use picture. Then this page that says composition reference, we're just going to upload that image to save this one. And upload that same image under the style to have the same style as our image. So style again. And just describe the image. I'm just going to write use reference pictures. and just hit generate. So what this website is going to do, is going to generate similar images. So this one will remove from Photoshop. So I said, like what we did, I, I came to this place, then I changed it from landscape to portraits. Then I selected photos and I uploaded this image as the reference. This one will remove the uh, subject from as the reference. So you can see it has given us similar image, similar backgrounds to this one. It's not, it's not directly like the same, but it's just similar. So if you don't like anyone right here, you can click on generate again. And it's going to generate other options for you. So let's generate again and see if there's anyone like. All right, so I think I like this one. If I select this one and I want to get similar to this one, what I can do, if I open this particular one, I'm going to click on this edit and generate similar. So you're just going to use this one now as a reference 
to generate similar like this point so basically you can do this for any background you see online just upload it if you don't use it directly you can upload it to this website and it's going to generate similar backgrounds so if you have any questions just let me know if if you are confused on any parts just comment i think this one's a little better so maybe this one all right so you can just play with it and see what works for you so this is how you can generate similar background to any background you like so this is the first first lesson for today now what if you want to apply the background to an image and make it look realistic so i want to apply that background to this image and i want this to be realistic what i'm going to do let's use this particular one let's use this one so i'll download this image after i download the image if i want to use this image as a background once i open this firefly again this place that says composition i'm going to remove the um, former one i used i'm going to remove it then upload this image sorry i'll upload this image i want to change the background on this particular image i'll upload it on this um composition parts let me on my cursor so i'll upload this image on this place that says composition reference so I'm, i can just drag it and put it here like this so we have this image now why for this style i'm going to upload that background we just downloaded so you're just going to merge the both image together so i'll come to my download look for that image Okay, this is it here. So I'm just going to drag it and put it at this there. And just hit this same um this same prompt use reference photo. So I'm going to click on generate. So I'm just going to merge the subject and the background together. But not this particular picture, but something similar to this picture I uploaded. So let's just wait for it to load. Do you guys understand it so far? I shall. So this works for any type of image. I apologize on behalf of the network. So you can see, it just takes this um this uh, image and this composition of this uh, original image. Let me show you guys. The composition of this uh, original image and try to merge it with the reference background which we uploaded. I hope you are learning something for this video. And if you are, make sure to give this video a like and also share this video to someone who you think might be interested in this kind of video. Let's continue with the class. So if you don't like anyone, you can still click on generate again to bring more options. I think I like this one, but let's try another option, let's see. It's going to take the pose of this image, but well, not necessarily the person, but it's going to take the pose, the same composition, and apply it to the background you uploaded. So let's wait and see. Mm, let's try this one. No, no, no. Which one do you guys like? This one or this one? Or we should try another one? Which one? This one. All right, so we are going to download this one. So we download this one. After downloading it, we are now going to open this image instead of charge it to to make it look more realistic. Like it was, uh, uh, like the picture was shot in real life. Right now it's looking, it's looking fake and plastic. So we'll upload this image instead of ChatGTP first before we do anything inside of Photoshop. So I'll come to ChatGTP now. And I'm just I'm just going to upload that image. I'll come to my download. Look for that particular image. This is it right here. So this image, I will upload it to ChatGTP. So I can upload it from here. If I click on this plus icon, it's going to tell me to add a photo or I can just drag and drop it to charge it like this. What I'm going to tell charge it to do, I'm just, to, I'm just going to say, make this image look realistic. Like it was shot. Sorry, shot. Mm. In real life. With a 
with an 85 mm. So you just give it the more description you give to charge the more the image comes out. So it just depends on what you want. So I'm gonna say with an 85 mm lens. And then 1.8. Lens and also make the shadow and highlights defined. And I'll click OK. So we're just going to try and make this image more realistic like it was shot with the description I gave to the image. You can also change the color if you want to change the color. You can add it to the description of this, uh, what you are doing the description. Any color you want the image to be, you can actually add it to the description as well. So the more the description you give to charge the more the image. So whatever you give to charge that's what it's going to give back to you. So I just wait for it to load. All right, so you can see this one looks more more realistic than that first one and we have the shadows and everything so i'll download this image now if i download this one i'm going to open this one inside of photoshop right now because this is the one we're going to use to do the manipulation so this is the background we want to use because it's more realistic than that first one so i'm just going to right click and open with photoshop and i'll copy it four by five first then generative respond to fill those parts. So we can use this generative respond to fill those other parts. It's going to look realistic. Instead of using the content aware, like I explained earlier, with this generative respond, once you select, even if I move it up like this, it's still going to fill those edges. And it's going to look realistic. But I'm not going to do it like this. I'll, I'll take it back. But I just, want to, I just want you guys to see what's going to happen. It's just going to fill those particular places and it's still going to look great. So if you have maybe you have a text image and you want to expand it or you want to crop it 4x5 for Instagram, you can use the generative expand. It's just going to fit those elements for you. So you can see you have three options, first option, second option, the third option. So which one works for you? This one will, this one is really nice, but you can wait, do it back and just crop it a little bit like this and hit generate again. After I can use generating. I will now remove this subject and just copy the background and apply it to that my female image. Since we already have the same composition of the same style, it's going to be easier and it's going to look great. So from here now, I'll just remove the subject from the background. And hit remove. All right, so the first duration, the second duration, no. The third duration, I think this first one works. So I'll create a stamp visible layer, come out option shift E, so I can have only the background. And this is the one I want to copy. So I'm going to copy this one and just open the image I want to apply it on inside of Photoshop. So let me go to that image I want to use it on. This image, open with Photoshop. So I'll just remove my subject from my background. You guys not remove subject from background, right? Okay. So I said if you wanted more detailed selection, you can click this job that I have on this cloud, but it's going to use the internet. But if you use this quick, sometimes you might not get the right selection. But with this cloud, if you use it, you're going to get a more detailed and accurate selection. So that's what I use for this one now. All right, so I've done that. What I'll do now, just copy this background. Where's my background? Okay, copy this background and just paste it on this image and increase it like that and hit OK. So you can see. Now, if you want to change the color, you can just use your adjustment layer, maybe hue and saturation and pin it to this background there and you can change the color. But I'll not advise you to do that, but you have the option to do that if you want to. I think I'm going to reduce the saturation a little bit like this. All right. You can see, because we did that tragedy, the shadow is, is looking really like this is the original shadow on the image. Also, one thing to take note of, 
the kind of image, the kind of background we want to use, depending on the the kind of image, if you want it to be really realistic, you just have the kind of background in mind and apply it to your own image. Like, so for me and what I'm going to do, I can just blur this background a little bit to make it look even more real. So with this background layer selected, come to filter, blur gallery, set shift. Just blur it like this. And okay. All right, so the before and the after. If you still want to bring some of the original shadow, right? Like this shadow right down the dice. If you want it, what you can still do with this um, barrel layer selected, double click on this place or open the blending option. Let me just open the blending option and remove it. Come to this underlying layer, split this black, and just going to bring back some of the original shadow if you want to do that. So I'll split it, move it to the side a little bit like this after i do this i'll duplicate this and um, this layer command j if not i'll me i'll come back i'll press I'll command j and just remove this split from the one at the top and move it up add the layer mask pick my um goddess map tool and just move it up to bring back some of the original shadow if i want to do that but because of this um, thing she's standing on, I'm not going to do that. So I'll delete this one and just leave it the way it is originally. Like that. So I'll bring all this thing back. Like that. So you can do this to create any kind of background you want for your image. So this is how you can change background on your image using AI. So any question before we continue? So that is my whole process on how I change background using AI in 2025 and there's a part two of this class where i thought about how to actually use ai to color grade your image and i'll be dropping that very soon i'll see you guys in my next one stay creative